Welcome to Digital Detectives, reports from the battlefront. We'll discuss computer forensics, electronic discovery, and information security issues and what's really happening in the trenches. Not theory, but practical information that you can use in your law practice, right here on the Legal Talk Network. Welcome to the 110th edition of Digital Detectives. We're glad to have you with us. I'm Sharon Nelson, president of Sensei Enterprises, a digital forensics, cybersecurity, and information technology firm in Fairfax, Virginia. And I'm John Simic, vice president of Sensei Enterprises. Today on Digital Detectives, our topic is EDRM's Mary Mack and Kaylee Wallstead Unplug. Before we get started, I'd like to say a thank you. Thank you to our sponsor, Logical, instant discovery software for modern legal teams. Logical offers perfectly predictable pricing at just $250 per matter per month. Create your free account at any time at Logical.com. That's Logic with a K, C-U-L-L dot com forward slash L-T-N. Today, our guests are Mary Mack and Kaylee Wallstedt. Mary is the CEO and Chief Legal Technologist of EDRM. Mary leads the project-based organization and is the former executive director of ACIDS, the Association of Certified E-Discovery Specialists. Mary is the author of A Process of Elimination, The Practical Guide to Electronic Discovery, considered by many to be the first popular book on e-discovery. Mary's security certifications includes the CISSP, that's Certified Information Systems Security Professional, and a CIAM, Certified Identity and Access Manager. Kaylee is the Chief Strategy Officer of EDRM and leads the global project-based organization and is the former VP of Client Engagement at ACIDS. Kaylee is a frequent public speaker on a variety of topics, from personal development to the nuances of e-discovery. She has extensive expertise in developing cross-organizational discovery strategies for large litigation and investigations. Kaylee is a certified e-discovery specialist and a certified identity management professional. Welcome to the podcast, both Mary and Kaylee. Uh, Thank you, John, and thank you, Sharon. We are so honored to be on your 110th uh, edition. (laughs) It's just amazing. What a milestone. (laughs) Thank you, Mary. (laughs) Absolutely fabulous. Thank you so much for the invitation. We're big, huge fans. Well, we we like having a fan club. The the presidency is open if anybody wants to grab it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, th- I, th- I think I think these ladies are pretty busy right now, Sharon. <laughs> well, actually, we'd be president of their fan clubs. It would work in reverse. Um, so today we're mixing up our, our format a little bit. With a hat tip to David Letterman, we're going to ask our questions backwards from question 10 to number one. So stay with us. So the first question is, are you guys going to exercise editorial or other control over the EDRM projects? We are going to support the project trustees and the, basically the project leaders and the project contributors, which is you know the, the project team. And the, the most that we would do would be make sure that the teams that put the content together are uh, harmonized, if you will. Uh, but many of the teams take that on themselves. So we're not, we're not going to exercise any kind of top-down approach. We're we're looking for people that want to champion projects. And so there's, you know, the leaders and the uh, participants and the contributors into the uh, projects are the ones that will be doing the definition. As they need coaching and or support, we will be there for them, but we're not going to exer- we're not going to exercise a heavy hand, if you will. Uh, Kaylee, did I miss anything on that? Absolutely not. I was perfect. So tell our listeners a little bit about EDRM's distribution and, you know, both globally and and the verticals that it serves. I'll take this one. Um, We are really, really excited about the EDRM's distribution. It's a question we've been asked quite frequently as this top 10, as you well know, is a whole list of that. Um, But as Mary went through our lists um, when we acquired the EDRM, Um, It was quite stunning. The EDRM is in 113 countries. Our biggest group of subscribers would be corporations at 33%. Law firms, and these are global um, corporations and law firms as well, um, 30% software um, platforms and service providers, 
at 17%. And then we have consultants, um, somewhat like the big four, Deloitte, um, EY, um, et cetera, at 8%. Um, education at 4% and government at 7%. And then there is a 1% um, that is either not subscribed or blank. Um, <laughs> but we're super excited about where the EDRM is. And it's funny, John and Sharon, before we even acquired the EDRM, the EDRM is the framework of our e-discovery industry. And this past year, we had the good fortune to go to a lot of places outside of the U.S. where Mary spoke or we opened uh, new chapters um, and, and did a variety of different things. And the EDRM was in every slide presentation. Mary, do you remember your famous quote that now we've said one million times? <laughs> oh, gee, how can I forget my famous quote? Now, now I, I just called the EDRM like the graffiti, the international graffiti of e-discovery. It's like written on every <laughs> wall or, you know, there's some sort of poster that, that's hung up or it's on the whiteboards and uh, in the slide decks and, and things like that. So we, we, we couldn't be, uh, you know, happier to steward George Soch's uh, life work and <laughs> Bolch's life work here. So. And Tom Gelbman. Absolutely. And Tom Gelbman, yes. It, it is multicolored, too. So that, that kind of works, Mary. <laughs> 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 yep. <laughs> She actually told George Sota that, and he just <laughs> laughed. She's like, the EDRM is like graffiti. <laughs> we, we may have encouraged a lot of graffiti writing here. They're, they're going to come for, come for us with uh, buckets of soap and a, a sponge. Uh, <laughs> so I hope not. Yeah, it's going to be all that whiteout for the uh, redaction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we know how well that works. <laughs> okay, so I did listen to another uh, uh a podcast or webinar that you all did. And I, I was very fascinated by the question, what projects are active? Because obviously some people didn't think that there were some, that maybe there were some that were and some that weren't. So who's active? Well, we, we are blessed with a very nice group of ongoing projects. Um, so some of them would include, there's a privilege project that's running on two tracks. One is more of a substantive and the other is more of a like how to get the substantive done uh, to reduce the amount of time and the cost for dealing with, with privilege logs. So th there's that one, there's a GDPR project, and that aim is to create a code of conduct that would be acceptable to a, a data processing authority or a data protection authority, excuse me, uh, in the EU uh, for purposes of monitoring, uh, and there's a there's a whole team that that is working that one. Uh, there's the Evergreen project, I'll call it, and that is keeping the EDRM updated and you know for you know as things change. Like one of the things that we're addressing uh, would be in place uh, preservation, and some of the tools have moved move things forward or move things back uh, in the model and how to best represent that, how to best represent things like uh, security and privacy throughout the EDRM uh, life cycle. Uh, there is a uh, reinvigorated IGRM, so the information governance uh, aspect that Eric Sedwick, who's with TIA uh, Craft, uh, will be, he'll be the project trustee on that one. And it even goes into things like stop words and, you know, some of the some of the things that if we can agree across organization can really save time, save money, reduce errors in transferring data from platform to platform or from uh, from service provider to service provider, law firm to service provider. All There's so many transfers of data that if we can come to agreement on things like, you know, in the forensics world, the NIST list of hash codes. That's sort of a shorthand for, yeah, we're not going to argue that you took those things out. They're not user-created data. And uh, uh, that's sort of become mm -hmm. a best practice, a best community-supported practice, and we're looking to do those kind of things. For the listeners that have lost track of where we are, we're on question number seven now. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but yeah. tell, tell us, uh, how, do, how do people get involved with EDRM? This is a great question, and it's a very easy thing to do. There are many ways to get involved. One is 
Do you see an area of need where a project within the EDRM can help put together a new process and sort of outline maybe new ways to handle difficult data situations, et cetera? We've had quite a few reach outs um, from the community. Uh, globally, actually, each area has different uh, a different set of issues or problems or challenges. So um, a new project is one way. Secondarily, everyone has somebody something to contribute. And so um, the projects are multidisciplinary, not hierarchical. And so um, you can come and contribute, uh, learn. And, and be part of um, one of these projects that are working diligently to make a difference. You can also, we have a brand new robust partner program through the EDRM, and you can get involved uh, with us and the community, helping educate via podcasts like yours or webinars, uh, share your um, service or technology. So, uh, Mary, am I missing anything? We'll be starting up our blog as well, so we welcome uh, blog entries and uh, just reach out, reach out to either Mary or Kaylee at edrm.net, and we'll connect you with the people that you should connect with, depending on what your interest level is. We'd love to, we'd love to meet whoever you are. Well, that sounds like a mighty open invitation, so I hope some of our listeners will take you up on that. I know one one of the questions, and we're we're now at six, (laughs) counting it down, is the community-created material uh, from EDRM going to remain under Creative Commons? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's one of the things George Socha and Tom Goldman did is they pioneered uh, uh, the idea of community-created content, and right now it's under a 3.0 license, which is anyone can use it, remix it, adapt it, as long as uh, there's attribution back. Uh, And I'm socializing with our project trustees, uh, upgrading from 3.0 Creative Commons to 4.0, which has got more robust protections uh, for intellectual property internationally. And uh, conversely, if there are things that people want to contribute, but they don't necessarily want it to be Creative Commons and it's their IP, we also can uh, annotate postings on our site so it distinguishes itself from the community-created IP, intellectual property. And also, um, the other option is to link to a website like yours. Uh, Sharon and John, if you've got, say you've got a forensics checklist you want to share, but you don't necessarily want it to be, you know, mixed and remixed and used commercially under those terms, you could specify what terms you'd like and host it on your own site. And we would link to it. Well, before we move on to our next segment, let's take a quick commercial break. Ten years ago, e-discovery meant lawyers packed into a basement, fumbling with complex, slow software, wondering where their lives had gone wrong. Today, not much has changed. That's why Logical is putting an end to e-discovery. Logical is simple, powerful, instant discovery software designed to make you hate document review less. Create a free account today by yourself with no human interaction at logical.com forward slash LTN. That's logic with a K, C-U-L-L dot com forward slash L-T-N. Welcome back to Digital Detectives on the Legal Talk Network. Today, our topic is EDRM's Mary Mack and Kaylee Walstead Unplugged. Mary is the CEO and Chief Legal Technologist of EDRM, and Kaylee is the Chief Strategy Officer of EDRM. I think, Sharon, we need to make sure that we announce where we're at in the steps. So we're at number five now. (laughs) <laughs> I think I need to do that so I don't get confused. So, so the <laughs> I, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm sure the audience is is they've never heard us go backwards, and and obviously we 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 are stumbling through the backwards. Yeah, I'm backwards part. enough already without numbers. Um, <laughs> so the the next question up is 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 EDRM a profit or not for profit? EDRM is for profit at this point. When we got the opportunity. Uh, we were on a pretty quick, uh, quick turn, and that allowed us to be able to to zig and zag. Uh, we are following in the footsteps of George Socha and Tom Gelbin and the EDRM 
uh, for its first, I think, 10 years was also for profit. However, as we t discussed earlier, the community created content will remain so, and and the we basically purchased an obligation to safeguard that for the uh, for the benefit of of the community, regardless of corporate status. So I gather that Duke is still going to be involved. Is that correct? Yes, they are, and we are very excited about working with Duke Law. Um, and the Bolch Judicial Institute. Um, they are a foundational partner for the EDRM. They are also um, assisting and supporting um, one of our biggest projects that Mary talked about, the GDPR. And they have just been absolutely fantastic uh, to Mary and I in support of uh, transitioning the EDRM, but yet remaining as a partner and active and, and assisting as we move forward. Yeah, the other way they're still involved is there's an invitation to submit articles to judicature, uh, and that's a, a duke Bulch publication that is sent out to federal judges in the United States and then uh, some of the, the uh, chief state justices and subscribers. Uh, so it's a very, very well thought of uh, high level. Uh, legal publication. So we're at number three now. And I think I think what a lot of folks are, are wondering is, did, did you resign from, from ACES because you're, you were going to acquire EDRM? That is really interesting. <laughs> Kaylee, do you want to take that? I was afraid to start. <laughs> are, are you guys passing the buck here? <laughs> no, it was absolutely not. In fact, when um, Mary resigned and I resigned shortly thereafter, uh, we didn't know exactly where we were going to go or what we were going to do. But when the announcement went out uh, from ASED's parent company, Barbary, that notice um, got a lot of attention and caught the attention of uh, Duke, who was looking to find new stewards um, for the EDRM. Specifically, um, as Mary said, um, and I actually, I don't know if you said that, but um, they received a large named endowment. Um, it somewhat changed the um, what was important to Duke at the time, uh, or Bolch Judicial Institute. Um, and so they weren't sure where the EDRM, if that still was super relevant. Additionally, they also... Uh, weren't, I think, prepared, am I saying this right, Mary, for how much administrative work there would be with the EDRM in terms of the, the supporting a volunteer organization, et cetera. And so they reached out to us, and it was the right time, right place, and it has just been fantastic. Yep. 60 days later, we were on a, on a whole different path. <laughs> yeah, you were reinventing yourselves, which is something you're both very good at doing. <laughs> <laughs> so we were, we were going to talk about why did Duke sell, but I think we kind of covered that, didn't we? It's part of the story. The only thing I'll add to that is that their focus is uh, the Bolch, uh, Duke Bolch focus now is on the international rule of law. And so EDRM fits into that in that context. And so you'll see Duke, you know, working with us on that. Uh, and Kaylee, I think you said it right. Volunteer organizations, they take some care and feeding and support. And uh, we work in the legal vertical. Everybody is so busy. They're, you know, they're hourly billers or timekeepers. And so to to be available at the time the volunteers are available and then uh, providing that level of support, uh, given that they their mission was was shifting into, a, I think, a, a broader um, mission that this was a sub part of that. That's the reason that they that they were looking for the new steward. So we're at number one, the last one. And I know that everybody is really interested in your business model. <laughs> but how, how are you going to make Mr. Green? <laughs> That is definitely a Kaylee question. I did, I did not want to overtalk at all. Um, and it's funny, Mr. Green, we've actually been asked that, and it is number one for a reason. Even Sharon on the webinar that you listened to, somebody typed that into the question. It was the first question we got. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? But it it does, I, I can understand that, you know, you have this thing that you've got now, and, and how are you going to monetize it? I mean, where's the money coming from? So Mary can jump in and I'll start us out. I think we 
as I was talking about um, our partner program, it is a really robust program and we have the good fortune of um, having service providers and platforms really offer monetary support and they and for events, for education, for our services that help them and that grow their brand. Um, and so I would say one would be um, the partner program, which we've had um, a very large amount of uh, incoming interest, which is is exceptional. Uh, Mary, do you want to talk about technical training? Sure. So, you know, as part of leaving well, when we did leave, we agreed not to do certain things like certifications or uh, general e-discovery or non-vendor-based or uh, non-technical types of things. And we've got 10 months left on that. Uh, it's a year a year agreement. So we will be putting together some technical training around things like uh, collecting from the cloud, uh, the various Amazon, Googles, Microsofts, also some of the adjacent aspects of e-discovery like uh, security, uh, access and identity, some of, some of the things both Kaylee and I are experienced in, uh, the privacy aspect of things. Neither one of us are certified in privacy. Those opportunities would likely go to our, our GDPR contributors and, and trustees. But Kaylee and I have never been at a loss for things to do and uh, things that were asked. And we were pretty amazed in our last incarnation that the majority of requests were not around certifications. They were around mm -hmm. other things. And some of the other things were, were technical training. Some of it was uh, social media amplification, uh, career counseling, strategy consulting. You would not believe that they, well, actually the two of you, I bet, are sources of similar things. People look at what you've accomplished and they say, hey, can you help us do that too? <laughs> and so, so we did get a lot of that. Well, I don't think you're going to have any trouble making Mr. Green. <laughs> um, and, and I can see it being the number one question, but you two are so so enthusiastic and so energetic. Um, anything you put your, your mind to, I know you would succeed. And I know that you're extremely busy starting this big project here. So we want to thank you, John and I, for, you know, for being our guests today, Mary and, and Kaylee. Just a, a, a marvelous new chapter in the history of EDRM. I know it has a, a storied history and it's it's great to see it, you know, kind of moving into another era. And, and I think you guys will do just a brilliant job with it. So we wish you all the best in, in this effort. And again, thank you. Thank you so well, much. Sharon and John, we've been fans of your work for a long, long time. And thank you for having us on. Thank you both so much. This is a true honor. Well, that does it for this edition of Digital Detectives. And remember, you can subscribe to all the editions of this podcast at LegalTalkNetwork.com or on Apple Podcasts. And if you enjoyed our podcast, please rate us on Apple Podcasts. You can find out more about Sensei's digital forensics, technology, and cybersecurity services at SENSEIENT.com. We'll see you next time on Digital Detectives. Thanks for listening to Digital Detectives on the Legal Talk Network. Check out some of our other podcasts on LegalTalkNetwork.com and in iTunes.